Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, everyone joining us today. Welcome to today's webinar uh, on Trailhead DX India Developer Highlights. My name is Vishwa and I'll be a host for today. I am joined with Satya and Aditya, who are the Senior Developer Evangelist here at Salesforce. Welcome, Satya and Aditya. Hi, Vishwa. Hi, Hi everyone. Hello. All right, so let's get started. So uh, before we start, uh, let me uh, tell you this. Uh, we might be making some forward-looking statements about features that are not generally available. So please make your purchasing decisions based on what's currently available. Uh, Salesforce developers is all social. You can uh, tweet us at Salesforce devs, or you can follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn as Salesforce developers. You can also find some awesome webinars and videos on our YouTube channel, uh, which is Salesforce developers. And uh, this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be available on the same page where you registered for this webinar and will be also available on our YouTube channel. So before we start, I would mention a few housekeeping items. So everyone has been muted. So kindly type in your questions in the questions window of the GoToWebinar. We will try to get every question answered. Uh, if at all we are not able to do that, uh, please uh, tweet us at Salesforce devs or post it on our <clears throat> forums. So once the presentation begins, sometimes you may have issues with seeing slides in advance or audio issues. If that happens, just close the webinar and rejoin and that usually fixes uh, the things. So let's get started with the webinar and uh, Aditya and Satya tell us what you have in store for us today. Yes. Well, what we have today is very simple. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about what happened at Trailhead EX India, all the fun stuff that we have done with some pictures as well, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. and, and definitely our viewers will be uh, hoping for developer highlights, what happened, what is there for developers in the store today. So we are going to talk about the developer highlights as well. Awesome. Then let's get started. So the first thing that we have to do today is wish everyone a very happy new year. Happy yes. new year, everyone. Happy new year, everyone. Hope you all had a blast and uh, took some well-deserved time off during the holidays. Hopefully. And yeah, Vishwa, do you want to say something more? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, you guys uh, have been... A uh, few of you already attended Trailhead DX, or a few of you have missed Trailhead X, but don't worry, we are going to cover it today. Uh, first of all, thank you for making Trailhead DX India a huge success. So we are here with a lot of highlights coming from TDX India, what had happened and what are the key uh, 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 releases or key announcements during TDX. So it was uh, on December 19th and 20th in Bangalore, BIC, we had Srini Tala Pagada, who is, a, who is a special guest and a keynote speaker, who did the opening keynote along with Christoph, uh, Natala, and a few other product managers. Uh, we had some amazing super sessions and breakouts and theaters all day. And we had some hands-on challenge, hands-on sessions, uh, hands-on training, uh, quick starts, mini hacks, where you can get some hands-on experience on new functionalities on Salesforce. And uh, we also had a trailblazer celebrations at the end of the day, which is an after party on day one. Uh, day two, it was uh, more of a platform keynote uh, or a super session, what we call, uh, especially for platform uh, where Nirankush and some other special guests, of course, uh, Aditya and Satya was part of it. Uh, Aditya was on the keynote and Satya and Renia was driving the demos for the super session. So we had some amazing breakouts and super sessions on Einstein and uh, from being developer to entrepreneur uh, on App Exchange. And uh, we also had a Luminary closing note with Saina Nehwal, uh, which was hosted by uh, Sweta Rajpal Koili. So this is uh, a glance of what happened on TDX. Let's get into the details now. So of course, we had some wonderful moments. Uh, we clicked some great pictures, and you would see some of them now. So this is the entrance of Trailhead DX uh, uh, area. Uh, this is, was around, around 7.30 AM in the morning. We had a great crowd in the morning who are lined up to enter to the Trailhead DX zone. Uh, here is Kavindra, no introduction needed for him. So he is excited to welcome all the audience into the area in the morning. See, uh, you can see his smile. He was very excited to welcome all and his dream was uh, true now. He is the man behind Trailhead DX 
who made this possible for all of us. That is just before starting a big event, right? <laughs> of course, yes. <laughs> yeah. So this is a bird eye view of the entire area. Uh, we have different areas. We had uh, keynote. Uh, we had keynote room in the behind, but this is more of the welcome center, demo stations, theaters, breakouts, hands-on challenges, mini hacks, trading posts, a lot of stuff. This is just a uh, bird eye view. This is not uh, this, but there is more. We had breakout sessions behind the scene, which which is much larger than what you see. We had a big keynote room, and this is one of the Aditya's favorite spot not only Aditya's all the community uh, members and all the attendees uh, this is the trading post where they can all the audience can go and collect their prizes and swags yeah. at the trading post I heard the swags were sold out of course <laughs> we were sold out on almost on day one itself so yeah yeah, yeah. so this is the main keynote hall uh, we did as a pre-keynote show Kiran, Nitisha and a uh, few of the community members were part of it we had Veda we had uh, uh, Shruti Abhinav Garo as the guest speakers for our pre keynote, and uh, this was the best part of uh, the trailer DX. That was amazing pre note, which was hosted by Kiran and Nitisha. And I can see that the hall is jam packed. Of course. We'll see a better picture of how the. Uh, <laughs> so, how many people did attend trailer DX? Give a guess, Aditya. The slide says 3000 plus. Of course, we had 3000 plus attendees coming in for both the days at TDX. Very huge footfall. Of course, and I have never seen that crowd uh, even in TDX uh, US. And uh, this is, of course, Srini Thala Pragada who was delivering the keynote uh, at uh, Bangalore BIEC on 19th. And uh, this is the other side view of the audience. So the keynote hall was completely jam packed. Uh, and fully packed for the keynote hall. And I think that was an amazing experience for all our community members and attendees uh, with the keynote. So uh, this is the entire keynote team uh, who is posing to the, this picture. Satya uh, is there. Yeah, he just bought me there. I'm Satya, Shashank, uh, Kiran, and Nitisha. And of course, we have Surabhi Narula who has won the golden hoodie for her amazing contributions. Yes. You can follow, us, follow her on Twitter. Uh, make sure say hi to her and congratulate her on amazing work she has been doing. Aditya, why are you missing in this pic? I'll come later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, uh, this is uh, the demo stations. You can see the audience is jam packed. This is an amazing crowd. What you have seen for over the period of two days. And I think this is this has beaten. Dreamforce and Trailhead EHC US. Never had we had so many people in the demonstrations area. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never saw in any event like so many people crowded together. It was even difficult to walk between the booths. And this is a great experience for us, and we are getting ready for next year. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, this is a developer theater uh, where you can see the audience is jam packed. So we had a capacity of around 120 seating capacity, but, but that was full and people were standing to hear the speakers from PMs and probably Aditya was speaking here if I'm not wrong. Am I right, Aditya? I might be. Okay, <laughs> good. And uh, this is the breakout area. Uh, uh, you can see the area actually, uh, the area is completely packed. Even the walking lane is completely filled by the audience, uh, which is jam packed. Uh, the capacity was 150, but we were accommodating 200 plus. Uh, people here. were even sitting in the front. So of course, yeah, yeah people were yeah, sitting in the front. They're blocking the pathway to get in and get out of this breakout room as well. So that shows the enthusiasm of the people. Who of are course, watching. so we had amazing lineup speakers and amazing sessions and all the sessions are being delivered by the experts. So yeah, so audience were very much uh, eager to learn more from the product team directly. So yeah, this is the kids coding. We have hosted a kids coding uh, for uh, uh, school students where they can uh, innovate, bring up their ideas and showcase their uh, kind of inventions. Uh, it's more of a science fair for them. They've worked on different things. It might be on AI <clears throat> robotics and exhibited their prototypes uh, to us and they had won amazing prizes and great appreciations from the leadership team as well. And uh, this is the gratitude tree. Uh, all the community members uh, uh, were uh, coming down here and giving the gratitude to uh, the people who have helped them over the past of years. You can see someone uh, putting their gratitude uh, onto the gratitude tree. Uh, this is the hands-on area, like mini hacks and uh, training, where people were getting some hands-on experience on 
few of our new functionalities or the latest functionalities, new functionalities on platform. So this is community campfire where uh, we had amazing leaders from across India, the developer group leaders, WIT leaders and MVPs coming here at community campfire and sharing their experience, how to be part of the community, how to give back and how to uh, earn or learn from the community. So this, this is one of the best sessions which happened uh, where community speakers or community leaders were the speakers at this area. Uh, you might be looking at what at this page, but there is an interesting thing here. For the very first time, we have introduced a very new character. Hope you know it. That is Ruth, uh, who is uh, who resembles or who represents uh, architects in India. Uh, thank you, Dom, for giving us one more character. Uh, Ruth was very sweet, and he was the primary attraction at TDX India. Actually, with those mascots, people click a lot of pictures. Of I mean, and I can see that fun in their faces, <laughs> like in this particular photograph. Yeah, yeah. they were the most photographed people <laughs> in the event. Awesome. awesome. Great. Here, here comes Aditya. <laughs> so, Aditya, uh, this is uh, the part of, uh, this is the <clears throat> product keynote or the platform keynote, which happened on day two, uh, super session. So, Aditya, Nirankosh, Natala uh, was part of it. And we had Sagar, who again won a golden hoodie for his great contribute contributions to the community and uh, we have Rene uh, also as part of the keynote team and yeah Alba was driving the show yeah yep them. so this is Srin Dilpragada again uh, this is the career fair area we had a career fair for students and the journey to Salesforce audience we had partners who were interviewing this audience and rolling out spot offers Srini was uh, congratulating and handing over the spot offer uh, for one of the aspirants from Journey to Salesforce and from students uh, programs. By the way, how many offers were released in those two days? Uh, I think we had some great numbers. I think uh, I don't have the right number in my hand at okay. this point of time, awesome. but yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah. had around 40, 50 plus spot offers. Uh, that's, that's yeah. Great. yeah. And we wrapped up day one with an amazing trailblazer party. Uh, we had a great uh, uh, band. Uh, and that's Ambali Menon. Ambali Menon, who, who was rocking the event that day, that evening. So participants were enjoying the show. I think, do you want to see the other side? Yes. yes the other side. Uh, don't ask us what people are holding in their hands, but they are I having- I can see one is a phone. Of the course. other one I'm not going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can see from this big the audience are having a great uh, time in the evening on day one uh, with an amazing wrap up party or day one after party. Uh, so this is uh, the closing keynote uh, by Ra uh, Shweta Rajpal, Srini and uh, Sayana Neval. Uh, Kavindra was part of it and Sayana's uh, father is uh, on the pick. So we had a great uh, closing note as well. You can see the audience behind. So even the closing note was jam packed and she inspired the audience and she's a trailblazer and- Really inspirational story she's got. Yeah. yeah. All right, so this is the team. Uh, uh, the team which is working behind the scenes for Trailer DX India. You might not be able to see all everyone because few people are again busy on different stuff, but whoever are available. So they had a team pick and this is an amazing team who put Trailer DX India put together for all of us. And uh, we had an amazing uh, shoot or a photo with India community, all the leaders uh, from India and the community members have joined uh, to, to click a pick at day two and of day. So you can see the group pick, see the uh, uh, great excitement what you see in the audience. Kavindra Srini was part of this pick, of course. Can I see you here, Aditya, Satya? Yeah, we are, we are somewhere <laughs> in between. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, so we also had the Sri Lanka uh, community here, so uh, which is part of Aka, uh, Ohana again. So they had the, they are representing the Sri Lanka community here along with Sri. I see you are there in the picture. Yeah, yeah. me and Kiran. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Aditya, of course, you and Satya. Everyone, yeah. of course, are here. Yeah, but one thing to note is that this is on day two, yeah. and people are still so very excited. Of course, yeah. And finally, <laughs> finally, this is the India Developer Relations team. Uh, we were having a celebrations on day two, uh, celebrating the event success. Uh, it was a great experience for all of us hosting you for two days at TDX India. 
we had a great time and do you have something to share satya and aditya thank you for letting us be a yeah, part of in it. fact <laughs> thank you uh, for compiling so many photographs which in fact let me show right from the queue line to the completion of the event like i can feel everything from these photos yeah, yeah. basically for whoever thanks aditya for also compiling the photos yeah whoever attended trailhead dx india this is going to be your memory refresh for them and whoever didn't attend trailhead dx india i'm sure this is going to make you jealous and make sure you be first in the line to register the next year the next yeah. year <laughs> yeah awesome so what next uh let's go ahead and get into the highlights so what we have in store for us uh, aditya yeah so thanks vishal for telling us all about what happened at the event i mean more to the audience and not to us but uh but now it's time to get into some technical stuff and see what are the highlights for developers uh, who attended trailhead dx india and all of the features that were launched so first uh, i'm going to start with the salesforce customer 360 and the reason i'm going to start with this is that everything that we have done is going to tie back into our customer 360 model and salesforce customer 360 essentially contains customer 360 apps that is on the left hand side and the customer 360 platform which you can see on the right hand side and the customer 360 platform is going to bring together all the pieces that you need to build these modern apps and this is the world's first full stack on which you can build apps using both clicks and code and that is powerful now using this platform we have built all of the customer 360 apps that you are able to see on the left hand side including sales service marketing and commerce but using this platform you can also build custom applications of your choice now as you know we continuously keep innovating on the salesforce platform and there are three releases every year and what we are going to do today is we are going to bucket those innovations into three different streams one is build connect and manage to see using these features how you can build connect and manage your applications and the first thing we are going to do today is start with the build chapter and this is how it was organized in the keynote as well and all all of our sessions happen in a similar way where we organize stuff into chapters and then take it one by one now in in the very first chapter of build we are introducing the salesforce customer 360 data manager now in the initial slide i showed you salesforce customer 360 and how all the 360 apps are tied together but a core part of customer 360 is data because without data you don't really know about your customer and customer 360 data manager is a core part of achieving the true customer 360 and what is this data manager it actually helps you build a single source of truth of all your customer data across different clouds so in the end what happens is when you use customer 360 data manager you create something called as a global profile which contains a unique salesforce id that is going to represent an individual across all of the different instances that you have on salesforce so that way you can tie all the information of a person together using this individual and that is what the customer 360 data manager helps you do we'll see it in action in just a bit and we are going to go to the next feature now i spoke about innovation and innovations are not just push to you and we don't expect you to accept all our innovations the way it is we always look for feedback and you have this idea exchange portal on which you can submit your ideas on what is it that you want to be put onto the platform and we keep listening to your feedback and as a part of that we know that you have requested dynamic dependent page layouts which is the number one requested feature on idea exchange and we have delivered it using these two features that is dynamic forms and dynamic actions now with dynamic forms you can now actually drag and drop individual fields onto your page layouts or in the app builder and with dynamic actions you can conditionally hide and show actions based on particular field criteria we are going to see this in action as well now the next one is about flows so last year we launched our new flow builder um which is visually and functionally a huge improvement over the cloud flow designer that we had and since then we've continued to innovate a lot so we introduced flow templates 
which allow you to get started with a pre-built flow instead of a blank canvas. So these flow templates can be directly downloaded from App Exchange, and once you use them, a pre-built flow is shown to you, which you can customize and then deploy instead of writing everything from scratch. Next the next advancement in Flow that we have done is you can now embed Lightning Web Components inside Flows as well. So previously you could only embed other components. Now LWC is also capable of being embedded into Flows. Now, up until now, you had to use Apex as a way to schedule some business logic to be executed sometime in the future. But now with scheduled flows, you have the ability to schedule a flow to run at a particular time in the future, or you can set up recurring intervals as well. So finally, you can choose how you want to run your flow. Um, so all of you might be knowing this, that different technologies run in different modes, that is Apex, you you know whether it runs in the system mode or user mode, what about triggers? So if you're confused about all of that and you have to refer to the documentation, this flows is going to simplify that for you where you can actually decide if you want to run the flow in the system mode or user mode. And these are some of the enhancements that have happened in the flow space. Now, I want to show you a quick demo of two of the features that I have discussed. And the first thing I want to show you is the Customer 360 Data Manager. So this is the setup interface for Customer 360 Data Manager, where uh, the home page is going to show you all the relevant information that you need to get started, including videos, links to trailhead badges, and stuff. Now, what did I tell about Customer 360 Data Manager? It, it binds together data from different data sources, that is your different clouds. So the very first step for us is going to be to go ahead and define a data source. So I go to data sources and add a new data source where I can choose between a Salesforce or, or a cloud commerce cloud instance. Let me choose one. You fill in some basic details and once you click login, we are going to maintain the trust. That is trust, as you know, is a very core part of our customer 360. And once you log in, we are actually going to use OAuth in order to communicate between different instances and share data securely. Now, once you connect, you'll see that the data source is set up and in a similar way, you can set up your Salesforce instances as well. Now, once you have set up your data sources, the next thing you need to do is define a data mapping. Now, what is the use of data mapping? You have now connected different data sources which have information in different schema formats. Now, data mapping allows you to group all of them into a single format, and that is using something called as a cloud information model. Now, cloud information model is kind of like a generic data model, which is going to represent all of the data that you have connected. So let's see how it works. So in the data mapping, once I have come to the screen, you can see that there are predefined data mapping sets, which means, again, you don't have to build mapping mappings from scratch. So you can click on any individual mapping set and you can see that there are predefined mappings between standard objects and your individual cloud information model. So what you can see here on the left-hand side is your account object from your service cloud instance. And on the right-hand side is the individual object from the cloud information model. So why are we mapping all of this? Because we need a common schema. And using cloud information model, you can exchange data with any other data sources using this. So all of you must have done various integrations and how you share data across systems depends on a common format that all the systems agree upon. So in the case of Customer 360 Data Manager, we are saying that cloud information model in the individual object is a common schema using which you can share data across all of your instances. And that is why we do this mapping. So mapping can be one is to one, or if you want to map your addresses, let's say to one is to many addresses, you can do it using one is to many as well. Now the next step that you have to do, once you have defined the data mapping and you say that all of my information is going to come to these fields in my individual model, I have to define the global profile rules. Now, why do I do this? So when I, now I spoke about having a single global profile for an individual customer and having a unique ID for them, which are shared across systems. Now to do that, you have to reconcile your data. So let's say you have two systems from which you have added information to your individual object. So now how do you do duplicate check within your individual object and make sure all the similar 
people are combined together into one individual global profile. So that is what these profile rules allow you to do where you can specify the matching criteria. So in here I'm saying go through my individual object and wherever the last name and email match exactly and the first name is a fuzzy match, combine them into one global profile is what I'm defining as the profile rule. So until this point, I have created my data model. I'm specifying my global profile rules. Now, the next thing I need to do is actually create a job that is going to pull all this data together. Till now, I have only defined the schema. Now I run a job so that I actually fetch the data from multiple systems and run all these rules that I have defined. So for that, you can just click new job, select your instance and click next. And once you select your instance, you're going to select your data source, define what all objects is it that you want to sync, define the filters in case you want to select only the objects created in the last year. Finally, you give a name to the job and then your job is ready. And once you click start job, now the job is going to run in the background and it is going to fetch all the data. And if you can see the previously run jobs, you can see that the message is going to say global profiles created. Now, how do you actually know how many global profiles have been created? You need a way to report. So for that, we have dashboards. And in the dashboard, specifically the data processing summary is going to show you how many source records are there. And after processing all of the data, how many global profiles have been created? Now, this is good at a very high level, but now how do you go and look at an individual record? For that, you'll have to go into data stewardship and you can search a global profile by using any of the criteria for now i'll choose a global email and once i click search i'm going to get the list of profiles now i have samantha jones and smith i'm going to select smith and see how the data is looking so here i have my global profile id on the top and i have all the reconciled fields so that if you can see there are different email addresses and different phone numbers that are associated to my global profile now how do i know where these fields have come from for that, I can go to source records and I can see that this mobile number has come from commerce in the profile. This mobile number has been entered in the order, which is why I'm able to associate both of these to the same person. And you can see that Samantha Smith is the name of one record, but Sam Smith is the name of the other. But it turns out because we have used a first name fuzzy logic search, it treats Sam and Samantha to be the same and it combines these profiles. Now, what if you see that there is an error? What if you see something uniquely wrong with this? Then you can just select that entry and say remove, which is going to remove that mapping from the source record. So it is totally in your control. How do you want to combine different profiles into a single global profile? And the data manager helps you do that with clicks. Now, finally, how do you expose that data to your user? So that is using any of our pre-built lightning web components that you can just drag and drop onto the app builder where you can see that there is a customer 360 global profile component, which is going to show you all the reconciled data on any page that you want. So this is all about your customer 360 um, data manager. Now the next one we are going to see is the number one requested feature on idea exchange that is dynamic fields and dynamic actions. So here, this is my opportunity layout. And now I said I have the ability to drag and drop individual fields. So let's see that. I go ahead and click edit page, which brings me to the app builder, which all of you are very much aware about. And what I see here is a new tab. So until now you only had components. Now you're also going to have a new tab called fields. And this shows all the fields in the object that allows me to drag and drop an individual field. So let's say I want to drag and drop the proposal required field right here into this tab. And I want to show this only if certain criteria are met. So I can actually drag and drop a field and say when it is visible. So here I'm going to add a filter that says if this page equals, let's say qualified, only then show the proposal required field. Now that is first part. Now the second one is I'll drag and drop another field that says proposal due date. And I want to show this only if proposal required is checked. So for that, again, I click on add filter and I say proposal required equals true. And I click done. So with just simple clicks, I've dragged and dropped fields. I have set the conditional visibility and let me save it. 
So let's go back to our detail page and see this in action. So right now I have, you can see that the fields are not visible because I have conditionally shown them only on the stage of qualified. So let's set the stage to qualified. There you go. Even without having to refresh your page, the new field has appeared. And not just that, I have set the date to be shown on select of this checkbox. So let's see that in action. So please note this area. Right now it is blank. And the moment I click this checkbox, the proposal due date appears right there. You need not even have to save the record for these changes to take effect. These fields are hide, hidden and shown based on your selections. And this is the power that we are delivering based on the feature that you requested on the idea exchange. Now, going back to our slides, this was all the demo that I could show in the time that I have. Now, what's new in Lightning Web Components? So Lightning Web Components is a feature that all of us have come to love over the past year. And we have made some significant improvements to that. And the most significant one is that the track decorator is no longer required to make properties reactive, which means any property that you define in your class is reactive by default. Now you might get a question, what if I use track? When should I use track? Because if everything is reactive, then what is the purpose of using the track decorator? Now there are a few scenarios where track is required. So I say, the track is going to make properties reactive, which means whenever its value changes, then your UI is going to get re-rendered automatically. But what if you have an array and what if you have an object and the individual properties of the object change, those are not automatically detected. So in those scenarios, you will have to use track. So in general, if you have any string variables or numbers, you need not use track. But if you have an object or an array and you want to track changes to the individual elements within the object or within the array, then you'll have to decorate your property with track. So that is a very subtle difference. I recommend you go through the release notes um, to get this further. Now, the next uh, feature that has come out in Lightning Web Components is the Lightning Message Service. It has been around for quite some time as a pilot or developer preview, but right now, we are launching it in beta and the purpose of lightning message service is that you can communicate using lms api and the communication can happen across your dom or a components visual force pages lightning web components and even if you have a lightning web component embedded inside your uh, footer that is if you have a utility bar and you have a component inside a utility bar you can communicate with those as well. So lightning messaging service is kind of like a unified interface with which you can fire and receive events across all of the custom components that you can create. And finally, we have smarter source tracking for lightning web components in scratch orgs, which means you can actually get the list of all the changes that have been made and you can compare the code between your Salesforce org and your local system. And you can run any of your commands that is for source pull, push, or status in order to get these changes or compare the changes that have been there. Now, this is Lightning Web Components. And what about Apex? So this is a significantly new development that has happened, which is going to reduce a lot of your time in security reviews and stuff, where you, you now have a new clause inside your SOQL query that you can put in order to enforce field and object level security. So if you look at the query on the screen, it says select ID and name from account with security enforced. Now, the moment you write this, what it does is this query is going to return results only if the user has relevant object and field access on ID, name, and the account. If the user doesn't have access on any one of these, this query is going to throw an exception. So we have simplified all of it for you. You need not go back to your schema methods and say schema dot field dot is creatable, is updatable and all of that. You can just use this clause. And please keep in mind, this clause can only be used inside Apex. Now the other method that we have um, released is security dot strip inaccessible. And the purpose of this method is it actually removes the values of the fields to which the user doesn't have access to. 
So in the example that you're seeing on the screen, there is an SOQL query, which is going to return the results. And the moment you use security.strip inaccessible, it actually checks for relevant permissions on all the fields that have been retrieved. And if you don't have permission on, let's say the actual cost on the campaign object, it is going to remove the value of the actual cost and return the remaining values to you. So this is another way in which you can enforce field and object level security. So these are two new improvements that have happened um, in Apex. Um, and as a matter of fact, there is a blog that is going to come out in the yeah. coming month and feel free to go through that blog. So it's Aditya who has written that blog. Yeah. <laughs> so the next very exciting feature that uh, we have introduced in Trailhead EX and Dreamforce is Salesforce Evergreen. I'm sure most of you would have heard about it already. But Salesforce Evergreen is a new addition to our customer 360 platform. And what does it do? It brings in the ability to create serverless functions and microservices. And these serverless functions can be created in open programming languages like Node.js, Java, and Apex. And these functions are hosted on the Evergreen platform and they can be invoked in many ways. So if you want to write event-driven apps, then you can invoke these functions using platform events and change data capture events. You can even call these functions directly from our low code tools. That is, you can call them from our flow builder, you can call them from process builder, and you can also call these functions through Apex. And all of these are scalable, and we are doing all of the scalability on the Kubernetes uh, platform, which is going to balance your control and access, so you don't have to worry about scalability. So all of this is going to come to you with Salesforce Evergreen. And here is a small code snippet. This is actually a Node.js code. Uh, you might feel that it looks similar because Node.js also uses modern web standards and Lightning Web Conference also uses the same thing. So the code might look similar because of the same programming model. But this is a Node.js code snippet. And what is exciting here is that you can import Salesforce modules. That is, uh, in this I'm importing the Salesforce Einstein platform modules. I can directly work with a subjects. That is here I'm updating a case object. So this is a Node.js code in which I have Salesforce functionality hosted on the Evergreen platform and invoked within any of your low code tools. And this is going to That's, get very powerful. Yes. Now, awesome. So thank you so yeah. much, Aditya, for this amazing uh, features uh, uh, for delivering us. Uh, so Satya, I heard about a new Salesforce mobile app. Can you give us more information on this new mobile app? Sure, Ishra. I'm super excited to talk uh, about the new Salesforce mobile app, which puts your entire business instantly mobile, conversational, and smart. So when I say new Salesforce uh, mobile app, you have altogether a new experience. In fact, it's not even new experience. Whatever you're seeing on the desktop, the same kind of experience and the same ease of navigation is now brought into mobile. And this mobile has also become smart and it is highly customizable. So the new mobile app uh, provides a unified experience, as I said. If you see on my screen currently, you can see my desktop experience and also the mobile experience. On desktop experience, you can see the app launcher and you can see the same app launcher even on the mobile. And whatever tabs you're seeing there, you can see them as the menu items here. Not only that, you can personalize the navigation bar. You can drag and drop the navigation item. For instance, if I uh, drag that opportunity and bring it to the front in my desktop environment, boom, then you can see on the mobile as well, that is brought to the top. That yeah. is the first one. And the new Salesforce app is again dynamic. When I say dynamic, you can configure your pages. You can customize the pages using your Lightning app builder. So as Aditya said, this is a well-known app builder, well-known tool, which we use mostly to configure our uh, pages. So you can drag and drop your standard components. You can also drag and drop your custom components, which are built either using your LWC or other programming model. And the beautiful part of it is now you can also see the mobile preview. If you see on the screen there, on desktop, I clicked on the uh, mobile dropdown and selected mobile. Now you can see the mobile preview there. And I also dragged and dropped the components. Get there is a LWC component. I just dragged it and dropped it on my mobile application. And not only that, you can also control the visibility rules. Say a map may make more sense for a person who is on the move, on the road, 
to check the uh, directions, but that may not be very relevant for the people who are working on the desktop. So if you want to show the map component only for the mobile user, you can always do that. And the next thing is the app. The new Salesforce mobile app is smart. When I say smart, it is inbuilt with the capabilities like instant analytics and instant voice assistant. So with the instant analytics, you can churn all your data. You can visualize your entire business in a single screen. And you can also uh, run the analytics to identify who is doing well in your organization. For instance, when I run my instant analytics on the data, which is currently on my mobile app, it churns all the data. And now you can see on my screen, it is in fact uh, running the analytics and it has given me a team leaderboard. Now I can see who of my sales uh, engineers are really performing well. So I can see the leaderboard there. Not only that, with instant voice assistant, as I said, you can talk to the Salesforce org. You can create some instant skills for your requirements. Maybe to create a record of a standard object or a custom object. Maybe you want to update some records. So you can like you no know, compile a series of questions and create a skill, and can, you can use that skill to talk to your uh, mobile application. So in this case, and as is, and one more important thing is when we work on desktop, it's, a, it's at least okay to enter the data, but when we are on the move and want to enter the data in, on mobile, it's really different. So instant voice helps a lot. In this case, I want to create a contact. So when I click on that uh, mic symbol, it takes me to my skill questions. In this case, I'm asking it to create a contact there, and it's asking for the account name. I'm typing the account name, and then it's asking the title. I'm giving the title of that particular contact, and then it's asking if I can, if I want to add anything else. I'm good. So it has created a contact for me. I say everything is good and says save. My contact is saved. It's that easy to create a contact using your new Salesforce mobile app. And this Salesforce mobile app is not just for one particular user or one particular persona. Rather, it is for everyone who is using your Salesforce mobile, whether it's the sales guy or is a your employee who wants to use it for his office purpose, like in, here in this case, concise, or if you want to use it to, for the uh, people who are always on the roads, on the move. So you can see, you can use the same mobile app. But did you notice something at the bottom, Aditya? So here you can see a different, different menus. Exactly. Yeah. It's a different navigation menus, but uh, it's it's altogether the same mobile app. So for each of the personas, we can customize. So how did it is how how is it all possible? So it's with the customer 360 platform, as you told in the beginning. So it leverages the complete spectrum of capabilities of the platform. Whether you want to build your mobile app using no code tools or low code or your code tools, you want to use artificial intelligence, all the platform capabilities which, was, which you showed on the right side of the customer 360 diagram. So everything comes inbuilt in your mobile application. And uh, this application was in fact released in October uh, during our winter release where uh, you can enable it using your setup menu. There is a shortcut, a small set of things that you'll have to do with that. The uh, experience is enabled for your users. But with the Spring 20 release, everyone is going to get this new mobile experience. That's all about mobile application, Aditya. Can you tell me something about the new API portal? Sure, Satya. We have launched the Salesforce API portal. And uh, what it does is it actually consolidates all your APIs into one place. So whenever you want to integrate with Salesforce, you know there are a bunch of APIs that Salesforce offers. But it is it might be a bit difficult to discover all these APIs. You'll have to search through documentation. But with API portal, everything is available in one place, along with a bunch of documentation as well. That is, what are those um, parameters that your API is going to accept? It is um, really difficult to remember all the parameters and stuff. Yeah, and most but... importantly, which one of it is required or not? Exactly. All of those are very detailedly documented. And you're also going to have a mocking service. So you can actually test your APIs right from within the API portal. And this mocking service, you can create your own, or you can actually connect it to your sandbox or production instances to test with live real data. So that is the power of uh, the API portal. 
Now, the next uh, one about connection is all about Einstein. So we have introduced Einstein vision and language quite a while back, and you had to write some command line code in order to create your models. But now there is a new app that is available on the app exchange with which you can build your model with clicks. We have also piloted Einstein multi-language, which means your sentiment API and intent API. Those can now work with up to six languages. This is in the pilot phase. We have also introduced Einstein optical character recognition in pilot, which is going to convert, I mean, it is going to identify any text that is present in your images. Finally, Einstein voice, which is in beta. Um, I already saw a use case of Einstein voice in our mobile application as well. Exactly. It is, it is the same mobile app on which you have this assistant with which you can talk to Salesforce. And I'm sure most of you are excited to look at one of the speaker on the left hand side, the Einstein speaker. This has been shown in Dreamforce and TLTX India. Sadly, it is very exclusive and it is not for sale. At the moment, yeah. <laughs> So coming to the next um, feature, uh, we, we talk about connections and there is no better way to connect with partners in a trusted way than blockchain. So blockchain, I'm sure all of you would have heard, it's a very complex technology to implement, but with Salesforce, we are making it simple. That means you can actually create a blockchain network with just clicks. So very similar to, uh, how you create an app with clicks, you can create a blockchain app as well. You just have to define the name, define the data model, and then you're ready to go. And the best part is the data model that you create, you have access to the same trust level in Salesforce. And these blockchain objects can also be integrated with your low code tools. That is, you can actually create a mobile app by using Salesforce APIs, or you can show them in page layouts. So all of it is possible with the blockchain data model. And the only significant difference is that any records that you create in the blockchain are immutable. That means once you create a record, you cannot edit or delete that record. So that is how blockchain works. So, so that means if someone sense. tampers with the record, you can easily identify and then track. Yeah, it is actually impossible to tamper but even if you tamper we will be able to track exactly. it down because the way blockchain is built is if you tamper with the blockchain the entire chain breaks because it is, that is connected with connected with hashing algorithms and stuff so like i mentioned it is a complex technology but you need not be worried about that complexity just know that you define your data model and run it so that is a very simple conclusion to the connect chapter like i mentioned we are builders so yeah thanks for sharing some important uh, features on build and connect uh, aditya so satya what we have in store on manage yeah one important thing which i want to talk about today and uh, with which i'm like low very much amazed is the local development so most of the times i'm on the move so whether i'm traveling in my in the metro rail or i'm traveling in the cab i just wanted to work on the components which i'm currently working on i just don't want to rely on internet <laughs> it was broken just now yeah. but it's fine yeah so even in that case i should be able to develop that is quite possible using the local development the local development is currently in the beta uh, you can use it you are free to use it you try your components you can develop your components locally on your system and then when you feel like your component is fully ready you can deploy it and you can also see your component using the url there called localhost 3333 so i'm going to show you a nice demo for that but before that i also want to talk about one more important and exciting feature is something called as open sourcing so there was asked from many developers why not uh, open source the code of these standard components right so it was there was a there was a request even in the idea exchange so now you have more than 50 plus uh, base components that are open sourced they're not just open source they are also uh, we, we also provided some kind of examples a repository just like our uh, the cities app when we launched lightning web components which makes things easy to learn by seeing the bite-sized examples like you no know, the examples which are less than 30 lines of code we similarly have one more app for the base components open source as well with which you should be able to easily learn about uh, the source code and how also how to use that source code for your components for your customizations so let's do it with a 
demo. So let's get okay. into the demo. So I'm currently in my uh, Visual Studio Code, one of my favorite IDE. From there, you can directly start your local development server. If I'm not wrong, I am I already started my local development server, but when I open the command palette and type local server there or local, you can see the commands uh, to start your local development server, stop your local development server. If it's already started, you can also open the local development server. So right from your command palette, you can start your local development server. In this case, I created a component called base component demo.html, which I want to show you in my local development server. So I can go there and I can say uh, open local development server. It opens it. I can see the component. So I can search for my component uh, here, like base component example. Even if I don't remember the name, it's absolutely fine. I can even launch it from here. I can right click and I can open the component here. I can see the component which I'm currently working on using this item as a VX preview component locally. When I click this, it takes me there directly into my component and I can see the component. Whether you can search for the component or you can see the component. Not only that, you can even navigate from your local development server to your Visual Studio Code. So I can navigate directly to the Visual Studio Code from there and it takes me to my component file. Visual Studio Code is becoming a lot powerful these days. Huh? Yeah, very much. So uh, on the left side, you can see some menu items where you can see the Lighting Explorer from where you can get more information about the components uh, in your Lighting namespace, all your base components. So you can also select one of the components. When you click this icon, it opens also opens the component library in your browser from where you can see the documentation specification and all. But now the time is short. So what I can do is I can select one of the components, say Lightning Bad, and see how I can use that component here and also use the equivalent component from the open source. So you can use the component. So this is how we use the component. I can select lighting batch. Okay, I can select lighting batch there and uh, it takes a label as one of the parameters where I want to give the same name so that I can easily identify my batch there. Let's save it. And if I go back and see my local development server, it will be automatically be refreshed yeah, I can see my lighting batch there. Okay, now we have transcompiled this base lighting components into a C namespace. So I use the C namespace just like our custom components and use the name of our base lighting component C batch. Now in this case, I'm going to use the uh, batch source code from my local system. If you want to see the source code, let me open that file here. Let's go to batch.html and batch.js. So these are the files of batch component. It's a simple code, it just has label and I can supply that label. That's what exactly I'm doing in my lighting batch here. I'm supplying that label information. And if you see in my batch.js, so I'm just processing it. And I'm also adding a SLDS styling for my batch. Good. So let's use it. Let's say C minus batch. And let me use the label here. And in this case, I'll call it as say C minus badge again or some name, whatever you like. And let us save it and see how my component looks. So it automatically refreshes and it shows the component. And it's the same code, same source code. So it's the same look and feel. Now let's see how we can change this component. So I want to style this component in a better way. So what I can do is I can add some CSS styling. So I can go here. To the component code. Uh, I can see the batch component code here. I have batch.html, JS, and meta file. Okay, let's create a CSS file. Let's create a new file here. Let's call it as batch.css and let's add some CSS styling to it. So I'm giving some color back and all. Let us save it and Let's go back and see now how our component C badge looks in the local server. See, while I'm building it, I can dynamically see the changes here. So I can I can also like uh, make this component as a hyperlink. So let let us say I want to use an anchor tag, and I want to uh, give a href, use some URL there. And let's give the uh label which we are using currently 
so we'll use label so that the button look should look and feel changes now i'm using an anchor tag i'm using the same label now i just changed my batch.html file i changed the batch component this was the base component there and if i see here so you can see the color changed and it's also a hyperlink okay and when i click this it opens that page so here in fact i typed it in the h reference i've typed a url which is a very important url which you should keep note of it so this is the github repository for the base components that were open sourced so if you go back here so this is the repository which i opened by clicking my button which i just created and you can see the documentation here on how to get started and how to deploy it on your uh, developer or or in your scratch scratch org and see different recipe examples as i said so we not only open source the base components but also created a recipe using those base components so keeping time in mind i've in fact uh, followed these steps and deployed it and here at the bottom you can see the documentation for each of these base components you can see all the 50 plus components listed here and you can go through you can click on the component and see specification documentation and you can also access the code right from your system itself as i access my batch components code now i've deployed this code uh, in my sandbox when i deployed this code uh, this is what you see on your screen uh, where you have the say tabs, which are just like your recipes app, where you have examples for each of these things. If you see this first tab, it's all about UI elements, which I used just now. I used the batch component there and made changes to my batch component. So here you can see the batch components. You can go to that source code and you can also make the changes to the source code and see how it works. So this is the source code of that particular component. And you have other examples as well like uh, it's it's like from the basic examples like badge slider carousel you can also see the exact advanced examples like record forms uh, and much more so it has a big list of uh, recipes which you can play with and you can also uh, make changes to that and also learn modify it copy paste the code into your component and start using that component here you can see a record edit form example and a record view form example so this is all about uh, the demo so where i just showed a how to change the base component so let's get back to the slides yeah so so this this feature is great so now if the developers have a problem with the base component or maybe they want something to be added to it instead of like posting it on various forums saying okay how can i tweak this base component to have my features in it they can just go to this repo clone the base component and add their own features and their own build which right. is really powerful yeah and the next step after creating after developing the component on yeah. my local system is to push it up to the sandbox yeah. if you and develop it locally there is yeah there is and no i think uh, this uh, though it's already on the screen so this is one of the newest kind of sandbox what exactly it is. yes lightning full what sandbox uh, like the name suggests lightning which means that this lightning full sandbox is now created in minutes so it's actually a full copy sandbox but because we are calling it lightning we have added the blazing fast creation time so instead of the current wait time that you generally have because it copies a lot of data from production and stuff uh, you can now create a lightning full sandbox in just minutes and that is something that we have added and not just that you can refresh this on demand as often as you want and it still only takes minutes awesome so that is the lightning full sandbox now this this is actually a story where you're developing things locally you're deploying it onto a sandbox and you're pushing it to production now i said lightning full sandbox is something that is refreshed whenever you want but one major concern that most customers have is that they don't want their production data to be replicated into a sandbox but as developers we always need live data so that we can test our code because most common issues are in production somebody's name contains a single apostrophe and our code breaks so we want to test all of those issues so one option is to use mock data yeah. so you're going to talk about the other option yes the other option which is even more simple so instead of me deciding what the mock data is 
I can actually transform existing production data into scrambled data in my um, sandbox. So for that, we have this feature called as data mask with which you can configure how do you want the data to change when it comes from production to sandbox. That is, I have three options. So for every field, I can choose whether the data is pseudonymized, anonymized, or made blank. What does pseudonymized mean? It means that let's say if your data is in the form of an email address, and if I say pseudonymized, it actually considers the data type of that field and puts in relevant data. And if I randomize, it puts in some random values, ABCD. We don't need anything. Okay. So basically, we can configure the way the data should look like. Correct. And finally, you can also delete the field. And let's take a look at one such example. So on the left, I have the production data. Uh, so the name has Shashan, status is reseller, there is a phone number and there is an email address. Now, the data on the right is my sandbox where I have pseudonymized the data, which means if I have the name field, it actually gets in first and last names from random sources. So it is Ricky Buster, which is actually a real name, but it is not garbage value like ABCD. So that is what pseudonymized means. And for phone number, I have chosen that I want to remove the phone number, so I've removed it. And for email address, again, I pseudonymized it, which means it still retains the format of an email address, even though it is invalid. So that is the power of Salesforce data mask. And you can configure this to be run whenever uh, you create a sandbox, or you can actually run it on an existing sandbox as well. Awesome. I think uh, with that, we have covered build, connect, manage. What are the different features that are there in build, connect, yes. and manage? So what next, Vishwa? Awesome. I think uh, that's a great uh, informative session and wonderful demo, Satya. Uh, I believe we are good to start using this cut cutting edge technologies. So if you want to learn more on the demos or the new functionalities, what we have explained in this webinar, uh, uh, make a note of this URLs on the screen. Uh, you can go in depth and learn it on Trailhead. So head to the URL on the screen so, uh, so that you can get some hands on on all the demos and functionalities what we have shown you today. All right, so I think it's time for q and I'm going to bring the questions up. Uh, let's have them picked one by one and get them answered. So Satya and Aditya, are you ready for the questions? Yeah, very much. Yeah, the questions doesn't need internet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me show you these questions one by one. Okay. Um, so is masking provided with full sandbox? Um, so masking is a different feature. Full sandbox is a different feature. Uh, so it is not provided as a combined package. Can a developer, um, okay. Uh, oh, there's a lot of questions. Can we do visibility filter on buttons as well? Um, so buttons are generally your actions and uh, you can configure actions to be shown conditionally. Then, do. Can a developer do his customizations on Salesforce mobile app? Absolutely. You can use the Lightning App Builder itself to customize and uh, other stuff. And there is uh, one more question. Where I can where can I find this app? You can download it for both uh, your Android as well as iOS. You can find it in Play Store and then you can download it and you can start using it by logging into your Arc. So some questions around Lightning Full Sandbox. So we have Lightning Dev Pro and Full Sandbox created in minutes. Yes, uh, Lightning Dev Pro was launched a little while before. Full Copy is launched now. There is also a question about, with the help of Kubernetes, how many records can I fetch with SOQL? So um, the way Evergreen works is, uh, it still is going to have some limits, uh, but it is not going to have the limits that you generally have in Apex. More details are going to come in soon. I mean, uh, this is evergreen platform is going to be in developer preview starting um, Feb 2020. Uh, it is also a very limited developer preview, so not everyone might get access to it. So if you need access, please reach out to your account managers. So there is one question from Rahul saying, can I customize voice assistant as per my need? Definitely yes. So you can create a skill and then uh, in that skill, you can also define the steps that you want to produce and then you can customize it accordingly. Yes, uh, when you talk about customer 360 data manager, so you'll have to reach out again to your account executive. They will 
determine if uh, um, if customer 360 data manager is really a requirement in your org in your scenario and then it will be conditionally enabled and there's one question from rajinish saying is new app getting enabled for all users by default yes after february 17th probably you can all see the new app on all of your mobiles can we access all data in lwc on local development server uh, yes um, but yeah make sure that you are connected to the scratch org never connect to your production org <laughs> Yeah, with Evergreen, uh, do we install the libraries even before we can import it? So yes, Evergreen is actually just a platform on which your Node.js code is hosted on as a function. So whenever you write Node.js code, you'll have to follow all the standards of Node.js, that is you'll have to import the libraries and then use them. Do we need to install any plugin for local server? Yes, you can uh, use SFDS plugins install and uh, there is a LWC local server uh, plugin that you can install from your uh, either your terminal or from your views report. So from dynamic fields, can I get the parent record fields as well? Um, so currently it is, I think, showing only the fields currently that are there on the object. If you want to show a field from the parent, maybe just create a formula field and then drag and drop that. Okay, there are a lot more questions. Again, uh, keeping time in mind, let's take a few more questions before ending the webinar. Uh, so, can we please uh, post those URL, sports.com, build TDX India, etc.? Yeah, the slide deck will so, be uploaded onto the page where you registered for the webinar and it is going to have these links. So why LWC local development is still called a beta because a lot is coming. So now, uh, so it's all you who can work on it and test it and uh, give us the feedback. Yeah, so very important uh, because these are TDX updates and a lot of things that we have shown on the slides uh, might or might not be available as GA products. So a right. forward looking statement that we told in the very beginning is very important for this particular presentation. Session, yeah. yeah. Uh, does data mask uh, okay is data mask applied automatically when sandbox is refreshed so once you configure a data mask i think it gives you an apex class which you'll have to put it in the post install script or post refresh script and then it's going to run this okay some questions are a little vague um is this a recorded session yes <laughs> Is there any configuration needed for this local development server? Yes, you'll have to install a plugin. That's it. That's it. And uh, you, you automatically get all the uh, menu items. So you can directly start the server from your Visual Studio code or from your terminal as well. Yes. Uh, to the question of does dynamic field visibility follow profile level security? Um, security is actually of the foremost importance. So whatever fields that you put on the app builder, uh, they are shown or hidden conditionally based on the profile level security anyway. So the dynamic visibility is also going to take into account your profile securities. So could you please explain once about the changes in attract the creator? In fact, uh, yeah, Aditya covered it yeah. uh, elaborately. So attract but... decorator, let me say it once again. So you don't need the attract decorator to make a field reactive anymore. So all the properties are reactive by default but you still need to use track decorator whenever you want to track changes occurring to a property inside an object or an element within an array. Right. So basically, whenever you are accessing a property in an object or an element of an array, then, then you'll have to use the attract uh, decorator. Otherwise, all private properties of the object are by default uh, reactive. reactive. Yeah, it, it might sound a little bit confusing, but go through the release. Notes it is actually explained with the examples over there. I, all right, I think uh, thank you so much for all the uh, questions answering uh, Aditya and Satya. So, keeping time in mind, we need to wrap up it now. So, <laughs> thank you so much for uh, joining us today, and uh, of course, thanks for bearing with the technical issues what we had uh, in between. Uh, but uh, uh, what you see on the screen is survey, so please tell us uh, how did you like uh, the webinar today and what you want to hear us and get, share us your feedback if you can uh, on how to improve 
our webinars in the future uh, so that we can bring the latest content what you need for us. Uh, with that, uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. If we did not get any specific question unanswered, please reach out to us on Twitter uh, or post on our forums. You can reach out to Satya, Aditya or me personally on Twitter. Thank you so much and enjoy your day ahead. Thank you very much and have a great year ahead. Thank you everyone. Have a great year ahead.